pronouns. She, her. Crap. Point my car breaks down now. Now she miles back at that rest stop. Mm, unfortunate. Right now in the middle of the mountains without so much of the speed limit sign in sight. In the middle of the night. In winter. Night air is cold but refreshing. My old car is a little stuffy. The seat warmers are a little too warm. There's probably a busted wire or something down there. At least I have cell service. So it's not all bad. My finger hovers over my recents. Full screen of unanswered calls to that. Damn. I guess check. I don't know. I don't know if it matters. You're gonna voice it from dead again, probably for a millionth time. It could. Now his voice still surprised me whenever I hear it. It's been months, maybe a year since we've talked in person. I call the blue like this. I just, I just don't know who else to turn to. Cryptid. Ominous. Typical pops. Listen, kid, I need your help. I know you're, you're going to say that I'm crazy. I need to go back to therapy. I know, but this time you just have to listen. I'm a trouble kiddo. I'm running out of options. I know it's not bad, but please. I'm asking you to help your old man out one last time. I don't know how the tone of voice it unsells me. It's not unusual for dad to act weird and dramatic, but this is... I'm in Wayfield City up northwest. Address is 9 Cliffside Avenue, room 220. And kid, be careful. And the line goes dead. Thanks for all the details there, Pops. No, they're frustratingly vague. No point in asking where he'd been for weeks on end. It's always the same. Working, he would say. I was working. But then he tried to make all the missed birthdays up to me with ice cream or baseball tickets. I don't even like baseball. Hmm. Paul Tultra. Proud to step over to the keypad, took up the number for the towing company on the back of my insurance card. Over the excited woman picks up the phone. How do you even have this much energy this late at night? Everyone's built differently on different times of the day. Thank you for calling the double time. Comp toy company, it's Stephanie. How can we assist you today? Hey, yeah, my car broke down on Route 55 and about the 10 miles south of Wayfield City. I'm oh, sorry, but it looks like the exact next will be able to pick up is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? I thought Toll Trucks are supposed to be running 24 7. Well, for the convenience, thank you for calling. Can I help you with anything else tonight? But I'm in Toll Truck. Once again, we apologize. Have a great night. I have to hang up the phone before I can even get another word in. Great. What am I supposed to do now? Since I'm beginning to evaluate the best way to repack my luggage so I can sleep in the back seat, I hear the sound of another vehicle coming up the mountain. My eye follow the bright headlights of a solitary motorcycle, and it revs at the stop about 20 feet from me. God, I'm about to get road rage or kidnapped. Road rage and then kidnapped. When we see the silhouette of the rider, they remove their helmet and dismount. I tense, looking around for something to use as a weapon. Our antenna? No too flimsy. Cell phone? Yeah, I can throw it as a distraction. Brad takes out their own phone and switches on the flashlight, illuminating their face and the space between us. Car trouble? Okay, Adrian. You need some help? Uh, yeah, it's broke out of nowhere. Name's Adrian. He holds out a glove hand. And no, I promise I'm not an ex murderer. Please don't be. Oh, I guess I can eat you. Take a seat. Likewise. Head the way you feel up the road. You go in there too. Yeah. Figured I'd give, give you a lift if you need it. I mean, what other options we got? You got it. Alright, let's get going. He asked me up and now. You cold? Well, it's cold. Well, you know, you have to have it right the first time. It's freezing out here. Maybe a little. Feel the black leather jacket wrapping it around my shoulders. We feel hound dogs. Okay. The leather is soft and warm, and the worn, rough material feels comforting and safe. Leather. 
Much better. Yeah. He smiles. Let's go. I have one motorcycle behind Adrian. I'm not quite sure where to put my hands. Yes. Got a back of the seat. I don't feel safe, but better than nothing. And he looks back over his shoulder at me. Ready to go? Yep. I didn't realize his body popped the kicked hands, let and sell into the night. Look back in my car as he pulled away, and all my stuff's in there. Everything I own. Hurts to leave my car behind and had all of that thing all my life. It was dead as before. We wind through the narrow mountain pass towards Wayfield City. When there wind and buffets against us, making my eyes water. Glad to be in jacket, otherwise I would have been chilled to the bone. Worry about him though, he must be freezing now. Trying to relax, but it's difficult to stay balanced with Adrian weaves through the winding pass. Winding up on the bike, praying I won't fall off. Despite the discomfort, the ride is kind of peaceful. The night air is crisp and clear, and the twinkling lights of the city shine below. After a while, the mountains turn to suburbs, then the skyscrapers. And the city is quiet except for Adrian's bike. The earthy smell in the mountains gives away to the faint scent of the sea, so I close my eyes. Adrian calls out over the engine. Where am I taking you? Uh, yeah. You have the engine? What's that, huh? You got it. We turn away from central downtown to a quieter street nearer to the shore. Townhouses and historical looking shops line the cobble street. We come upon what looks like a bed and breakfast. Adrian brings the bike to a slow stop. Here we are. Not close side avenue, as requested. This is like what I was expecting. Not really dad style. Sign reads flip side in. They put a little mints on the pillows. Chocolates, actually. Get some sleep. You can get a tow truck in the morning. He stretches and flexes his shoulders. Probably should get, get going. Thanks again for the ride. Sure, no problem. Pretty sure he wants his jacket back. Pops on the bike and flips the kickstand. But I'm still wearing his jacket. He smirks. Keep it. Looks better on you anyway. He's all back down the street and disappears. What the hell? Okay. He's giving random man a jacket. Look around the empty street one last time before stepping inside. Looks like an antique store, but not a full theme. The old furniture is all dark stained wood and it smells like mouth mothballs. Oil paintings of seascapes are framed photos of seashells and starfish line the walls. And a dozen model ships of various sizes rest on any available surface. Classy. Woman comes over to the front desk with a cup of coffee. For you, it looks like a textbook by a lamplight. Howdy. <laughs> looks up at me. Hiya. Hey, Whitney. Hi. Takes a sip of coffee. Gonna stand there all night? Sorry. There's a coffee down the stands, clearing some of the scattered papers on the desk. You get a room? Oh, I'm looking for someone. Straight to the point, huh? Is that a lot of work on everyone? Uh, what? She smirks and moving papers organizing her desk. Who are you looking for? My father. Father, huh? And he's the guy at room 220. He laughs wryly. Of course he is. The reputation precedes him. Gosh, holy AWOL. He booked the room for two months, but I haven't seen him since day one. His room's just sitting there, empty. Still not complain, though. Makes my job easier. Still kind of weird. Certainly sounds like him. I'm gonna guess you two share DNA. Speaking of DNA, which of the following statements are true about DNA in human life? DNA is composed of only the elements of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus, or the complexity of DNA is facilitated by the tetravalent nature of carbon, capable of forming long, complicated amino acids. Something for the astrobiology final. Second one? Okay, rest in your hands. Anyway, I really need to find him. Well, I don't know where he is. 
but you can take the spare key. Maybe he left you a postcard or something. Really? Thanks. Don't mention it. He has me an old skeleton key made of polished brass. Oh, old school. Yeah, sleep easy knowing the locks haven't been touched since 1850. Right. So just buying our deadbolt. Besides, just you these days. What do you mean? Oh, it's just that crime rates have gone up almost double, you know? You picked a great time to hit the beach. But I've been perish. I've been holding my beach spot for months. My vacation must go on. It's winter. Vacation must go on. Have fun getting hypothermia, pal. Now, if you excuse me, gotta study. Right? Good luck with your astrobiology. Let me salute to you. Do my best. Head up to the narrow staircase. Room 220, room 220. Found it. Got a key. Lock the door with his key. End of demo. Damn. Sorry, I guess. That's crazy. Crazy unfortunate. Alright, so I guess that was the end of this demo. I honestly forgot the name of this visual novel, but it feels good to be back. So, you know, it's been a couple of days. Fortunately, I lost inter internet last week, so I um, wasn't able to record, stream, do anything for a little while too long. So, um, feel good to be back. This is the video or the game I wanted to do, come back. Hopefully y'all, you know, enjoyed this video. Of course you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, I'm, I'm rusty. Well, you know what to do if you like the video. And then of course, if you want to follow the development of this visual novel slash game, and then play it for yourself in the future, or just now if you want to, and try the other options. Of course, you know, I'll link everything in the description below like I always do. And hopefully you had a good day, good weekend. And you're going to have an even better week. And uh, yeah, I will uh, catch you on next video.